Hello, my dear researchers. You're watching this video for any or both of the reasons that you are in my research class or you're simply curious about what is the IMRAD format. So in this video, we will attempt to answer the questions that might be in your head. What is an IMRAD format? Are the abstract and introduction the same thing? And do I need to be a really good writer to be able to make an IMRAD report? IMRAD stands for Introduction, Methods, Research, and Discussion. In our sharing today, I'll be using these works from my class as our examples. So basically, the IMRAD format or the IMRAD style of reporting is usually associated with STEM or sciences. But due to the challenges of, of the current setup, it is recommended that we'll be using the IMRAD format of reporting because the IMRAD is a very brief style of reporting your research. So if you recall in your past research classes, you might associate research with hun um, hundreds of pages or even 50 plus pages to report about your study. But for, but for the IMRAD format, it will take only a few pages even 10 to 15 pages would be enough because the IMRAD format is going to be very brief, concise, and you only have to report what is basic uh, in your study. So let's begin with the I or introduction. In any form of writing, whether it's research or a feature article, an essay, a letter, or even when you introduce yourself to somebody, an introduction gives us an overview of what's going to come. So, in, in the IMRAD style of reporting, the introduction gives us the research questions that the, the research work attempted to answer. So, this is where you'll be writing your SOPs. So, give us an idea, an overview of your study, and then present what research questions your study aimed to answer. Present the specific questions, and this is where you will also cite your hypothesis. So, for example, in this study on the effects of indoor activities to the student's health. So, this research aims to ask, what are the activities? What are the indoor activities that the students involve themselves in during this time of pandemic? Second, what are the perceived effects of these indoor activities to the health of these students? And third, is there a significant relationship between the in engagement in these indoor activities and the perceived effects of these indoor activities to their health. So this researcher in his introduction or in her introduction is going to tell us what's the study about, what, what's the significance of studying the effects of indoor activities to the health of a student. And then, specifically, this, these were the questions that she aimed to answer in the study. And what's the hypothesis? The, the null hypothesis is there is no significant relationship between the time spent on indoor activities and the perceived effects of these indoor activities to the health of a student. So basically, that's it. That's how the introduction will look like. What's, what's the study about? And what are the questions that you tried to answer in your study? In fact, you may also explain what's the significance. So what? what, what what's the importance of being able to know um, the effects of indoor activities to the health of a student? That's it. And it will not even take so many pages. A few paragraphs will do because the IMRAD format aims to give a brief style of reporting um, research results. Let's now proceed to the M or the methods part of your research. So since in the introduction, you've already presented the research questions that your study aimed to answer, this is the part where you will tell your readers how are you able to attain the data to be able to answer those research questions. So of course, we know that in this challenging time, it may not be safe for us to be going around and handing out questionnaires to our respondents. So we opted, or many of you opted, to use um, you, uh, Messenger or Google Forms to be able to get this data. 
So you also indicate that in your methods part, tell your readers that you gathered your data through this means. And also, how were you able to select your participants? How did you know that they would be your participants? What were your qualifications? After that, you tell your readers, how many participants did you choose? What is that based on? Did you just decide in a particular number, a particular random number just for the heck of it? Or you decided that 30 or 50 participants would be enough to be able to arrive at a good conclusion. After talking about your respondents and how you selected them, you talk about um, what would you, what did you do to the to the data that you gathered? Since the methods part talks about your sources of information, it is important to note that your primary sources of information are the ones that you interviewed or you got answers from. Those are your primary sources of information. How about your secondary sources of information? These include the books that you read, journals, online sources. You may cite them in this part of your study. So you can quote them. You can now cite them. Of course, citing sources is going to be another discussion. And I suppose you have already mastered the skill even in your previous research classes. So going back to the study we had earlier on the effects of indoor activities to the health of students, we've already gone through how the introduction will sound like. Now let's proceed to the methods part. What will the researcher do or say in the methods part of her IMRAD report? So M is for methods. So she will describe how she chose her participants, how many of her participants were chosen, how did she gather the data, and she will now describe what did she do with the data. So what if she gathered the, the names or, or the activities, the indoor activities that the participants did and how much time they spent on those indoor activities and what are the perceived effects of those activities to them. So what? So this is where she will describe what formula did she use? What type of statistical treatment did she use to the data that she gathered? So that's for the M part, methods. Okay, so here's another study on, um, on visual art skills during the uh, modular distance learning and face-to-face -face learning. So I suppose that this researcher means to, means to compare the skills learned as a visual artist at the time when there was no pandemic, when we did not hear about COVID yet, and now that they're already having their modular learning, mode of learning, okay? So this researcher, in her methods part, must describe what data did she seek, who were her respondents, and how were they selected. And then now she will describe, she should describe, what was her sampling technique? How did she know that uh, this certain number were selected for her participants? And then... How were these computed? What did she do to the data that she gathered? What were the tests that were performed? So, of course, in this video, I will not anymore elaborate the different tests, the different statistical tests that must be done to the data. You can have, you can have, uh, you can ask for assistance from your statistician or, of course, you can go back to your old notes on statistical treatment. All right, so that's the M part of your IMRAD report. Before we proceed to the third part of our report, let's have a quick run through of the other two parts that we have already we have already tackled, which are the I or introduction, M for methods, and so now we proceed to results. Basically, results is really the meat of your reporting. This is the part where the readers would look forward to what you found out in the course of your study. So if you recall, in the introduction part, you gave research questions that you wanted to answer in, in your study. In the results part, I as a reader would expect what are the question, what are the answers to those questions. So practically, you will present the results as an answer to those questions. So for example, here's a study on 
The impact of social media to the Boholano contemporary art scene in the new normal. In this study, I find that in the statement of the problem, the researcher wants to find out what's the age and the gender of her participants or the resp respondent's profile. So in the results part, I as a reader would also expect to find what's the age and what's the gender of her participants. So you see the connection? Or in her second statement, or in her second question, specific question in her study, what are the respondents' profile on their artistry in terms of art discipline, specialization, art status, locality, where are they based? So I would expect to find in the results part the answer to these questions as to art discipline, specialization, art status, etc. So I hope you see the connection. For, so let's go back to the study that we had earlier. Uh, remember the study on the effects of indoor activities to the health of students. If you remember, question number one was, what are the activities that the students engage themselves in in this time of pandemic? That's in the introduction part. So I would expect in the results part that the researcher, the, the researcher will present the answer to this question will show the data of what activities are the students engaged in during this time of pandemic. Her second question was, what are the perceived effects of indoor activities to the health of the students? So I would expect in the results part that this researcher will show the perceived effects of the, the indoor activities. Now, the third question was, is there a significant relationship between the engagement in indoor activities and its perceived effects to health? So, of course, I will also expect the answer to this question. And this, is, this can be computed using any statistical treatment that the researcher uh, thinks is um, applicable to her study. You actually have different options in presenting your results and discussion. If it works that you will put results separately from the discussion, then do so. Some writers may also opt for putting results and discussion together or results and discussion and conclusion together. So whatever works for your reporting, then do that. So basically the discussion or the last part of your reporting should answer or wrap up the answer to your research questions that you presented in the introduction part. I, as a reader, would expect to find the answer to your hypothesis, which you presented in the introduction part. So that wraps up our discussion on the IMRAD format. So going back to our question, early in this video, we asked, um, what is the IMRAD format? Check, we've already answered that. Second, are the abstract and introduction the same thing? No. So we, we've already presented what's going to be in the introduction. The abstract is actually a shorter version of the whole report. So as a reader, if I don't, I don't have the time to read everything in your report, I will look at your, I'll simply look at your abstract. So since the abstract is like a, a bird's eye view of the whole research uh, process, I will expect to find, as a reader, I will expect to find the questions that you try to answer, what did you find out, and what are the implications of this study. You can also cite in your abstract, how did you find, how did you gather the data? So this is where you can quickly talk about what, what sort of statistical treatment that you did to your data. That's it. So that's the abstract. It will not even take so many pages. It's just one page or less than a page. It's just a quick view of the whole study. That's the abstract. And the third question that we asked earlier in this video was, do I really need to be, do I need to be a really good writer to be able to make a research report? I don't think so. Because, of course, it, it pays a lot to be a good writer because you don't have to sweat over it. You don't have to, to struggle uh, finding words to, express yourself. But since research reporting is technical writing, this does not require creative writing. 
you don't have to to imagine you don't have to look for flowery words to be able to express yourself technical writing is saying it as it is so that's also a rule in writing remember that since this is technical writing remember to use the third person in 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 reporting so you don't say i i, I did this i did that it's it's recommended that you use the third person point of view the researcher did this and that he she did this or that so that's it another remember that since this is already a report of your study use the past tense be conscious of of using the past tense in making your report because of course you only make a report after uh, the you've done your research process next is do away with informal terms as i've said this is technical writing so do away with slang words do away with figurative language because technical writing is literal writing do you need to be a really good writer yes it it, it is a plus but as long as you can say it as it is you remember to be simple to to express in simple language and remember that you are you are concerned that your readers will understand what your report is about so that's basically it that's a basic requirement so that wraps up our discussion on the imrad format i hope this video helps and i'm looking forward to seeing your imrad reports as soon as possible